Hi, good day. We shall be discussing about the importance of writing in the professional world. I'm your teacher in this course, Professor Michael Dene Diaterocho, and I am going to teach you about how writing plays an important role in the professional world. How can writing be that useful in your chosen field? Well, this is a common question asked among all of us. In the professional world, how important writing is? Well, for some of us, we might underestimate the power of writing in the professional world. That is why in college, we also underestimate the importance of writing courses like this. However, if we are to fully realize the role of writing in the corporate or in the professional world, then we would understand that in everything that we do in a company or in a corporation, in an institution, there will always be communication involved. And one common communication or one common form of communication involved in this world is the written form of communication. So in our field, we actually encounter several instances wherein we are asked to write something, may it be a research, a technical report or technical document or a simple letter. Even before we land on a job, we also write something, for example, the application letter or the resume. When you become a professional, you are expected to perform excellently. That is a must. That is why before the application process or during the screening process, employers would look at the credentials of the applicants. They would look at how excellent the applicant was during his or her college days. And aside from that, Communication skills are also measured heavily, most especially for jobs that will require excellent communication skills. But if I were to evaluate, I believe in most jobs nowadays, excellent communication skills are really a must. Communication, both oral and written, are very important in the world of employment because you would not know that one time you might be asked by your boss or your manager to write a letter or to draft a proposal. And it is during these instances wherein your communication skills, written communication skills to be, to be specific, are tested or are also highly used. Now, it is important to know the conditions of written communication. That is why we really need to reevaluate also our command of the language, of the English language, our grammatical skills, our language proficiency, so that we could also assess whether or not there needs to be improved with our communication skills in terms of written communication. Now, in the professional world, some of the tasks that you need to do include, for example, prepare reports of various nature. In the corporate world, the reports play an important role. And so that is why it is highly expected that maybe during the course of your journey in the corporate world, you will really be asked one of your days by your boss or your manager to prepare a report or perhaps draft a proposal, most especially, most especially for those who are in the accounting or engineering fields. And then create memoranda if you're the boss and minutes of the meeting if you will be tapped by your boss to be the secretary during the meeting. You may also be asked to make internal and external letters or write various technical documents. In the professional world, our excellent communication skills are actually one of our coping mechanisms. If we have strong communication skills, written communication skills, then I could say then that we have the advantage, that we have the edge over the other applicants or over the other employees. And that is why your strong and excellent communication skills would really tell your knowledge, not only of the subject matter, but also the technicalities, the things that are happening within the company, the things that should be incorporated in your technical document. Say, when you are asked to make a proposal, your communication skills will allow you to really express your ideas effectively in that proposal. And if you have poor communication skills, then most likely the one who is reading or the one who will be reading your proposal might have a hard time understanding the contents or the gist of the proposal and at the same time might question your credibility as the person who wrote or who made the proposal. So that is why we cannot underestimate the importance of excellent communication skills in the corporate world. 
That is why we always need to remember that even if we are already professionals, there should always be rooms for improvement of our technical skills. Courses like this will definitely prepare you to improve your technical skills. And in the professional world, you might have scarce opportunities to improve your technical skills. Even so, you need to look for more opportunities where you can actually improve, build, and strengthen your technical skills so that whenever you compete in the technical world or in the corporate world, then you'll find it easier to compete with people who have more advantages than you have. So, according to Aquino, Kalang, Bas, and Kapili in 2010, there are technical skills that everyone must possess. First one is proofreading and editing skill. When you write a letter or a proposal or a plan for a project implementation, you have to make sure that before submitting these technical documents to your higher ups or to your boss, everything has been proofread. Your proofreading and editing skills will definitely measure how good you are with the command of the language. Not all the time that you will have access to a person who can always assist you in proofreading or editing your work. That is why in the comp in the competent professional world, you have to make sure that you also have the basics on how to proofread your work or your output and how to edit the grammatical and technical side of your written documents. Through this, you are also ensuring yourself that you will not be humiliated with the quality of the output that you will be submitting to your higher ups or executives. Aside from that, you are also making sure that you are reflecting your competence, not only linguistic competence to the document that you are writing, but also your competence in terms of the knowledge that you are incorporating in your technical document. That's one skill that you always need to possess in the corporate world. You need to be good when it comes to proofreading and editing your output. Another tip, always remember that before you finally submit your paper, double check the entries. There might be some, some mistakes or errors with the accuracy or the consistency of the data or the information, much more with uh, grammatical lapses as well, present or existing in your technical documents. Second one is listening skill. In any corporate world, it is highly vital that you know how to listen well, not only with yourself, but also with the people around you. Let's say you are with a team working on a project. If you are not a good listener, then definitely you would not succeed working with your team. Tendency or the consequence is that your team might not be able to achieve whatever objectives were set before the project implementation. Therefore, it is very important that you improve or polish your listening skills because it is through this skill that you will really be able to fully understand not only the emotions but also the ideas, suggestions, and recommendations that your team members within a team project could give you for the, for the effectivity or for the implementation of the project that you have planned as a group or as a team. Listening skills will also enable you to correct your mistakes. Sometimes in the corporate world, our bosses or managers or higher ups or executives would tell us things that would help us improve as an employee. If we do not have good listening skills, then we would not be warm enough to welcome all of this constructive criticism, these pieces of feedback. But if we have great listening skills, then we would warmly embrace all of this, not as misjudgments, but rather as things that would really help us polish our skills in the professional world. So whenever you are in a professional world, you have to make sure that your listening skills are always activated because listening plays an important role not only in getting information but also in understanding the message relayed to you by one person in a company or in a corporation. The next skill that you need to possess is creativity. One important thing that you always need to showcase in a company or in the professional world is you being innovative. Innovativeness comes in many ways. Creativity of ideas, being original with the suggestions or proposals, and also making sure that you know how to play well, not only with your ideas, but also with the ideas of people around you. Creativity will help you also activate your imagination in a workplace. For example, let's say you are in a company which requires you to make a proposal or a plan for a project implementation. Writing these technical documents will be very, very difficult if you don't have creativity. But with creativity, you can actually create a 
twist in whatever you incorporate in your technical document so that the proposal itself becomes more appealing to your executives or your higher ups. In consequence, there is much more chance that your proposal will be considered, okay? Or if rejected, well, at least be considered by your higher ups or your executives. The next skill or the last skill that you need to possess is human relations. We all know that in the professional world, we highly value how well we work with the people around us. Sometimes in a workplace which does not give us peace of mind, we would really want to escape from it. We would really want to look for a workplace wherein we have this peace of mind, we have this freedom or liberty to be innovative, to be creative with our own ideas. And I think this is only possible if we know how to relate well with the people around us. Our interpersonal skills will definitely help us to make sure that we have good relationships with the people around us. Establishing good relationships not only with your bosses or executives, but also with your fellow workers in the company or corporation will also allow you to make sure that imagination, ideas, creativity free, freely flow within the company. For example, if it is a team project implementation, it is through this that we also truly understand that our interpersonal skills will also help us succeed to achieve success in a workplace. Whether we admit it or not, there will really be times when we need the help of people in the workplace. And so, if we have good human relations, then definitely it would be easier for us to tap manpower or people who could help us bring out or materialize our ideas. So, if ever you are in a workplace, try your very best to work well with the people around you and make sure that you establish stronger human relations with them. At this point, I want you to evaluate your strengths and weaknesses in terms of technical skills. At which part do you think you are strong enough in terms of technical skills? Or which technical skills do you think you are weak? For the weaknesses, you try your very best to improve them because whatever strength you have, it may not be enough. So that is why if you want to succeed really in the professional world, you have to equip yourselves with more strengths than weaknesses. If you have weaknesses, it's okay, but you have to work out these weaknesses to make sure that you can use them for advantages that you can perform effectively in a workplace. At this moment, allow me to share another PowerPoint presentation which will help you understand what technical communication is. So in this communication, you are also able to fully understand that there are also things that should be incorporated in terms of technical writing. Technical writing, background, purpose, and characteristics. So at this point, let us fully understand what technical writing is all about, what is its purpose, and what characteristics constitute technical writing. In the future, as what I mentioned, we'll be writing a number of technical documents. But the question is, what technical documents will you most likely write in your field? For those who are in the field of accounting or those in the field of engineering, well, most likely you will really write a number of proposals. But for those in the accounting field, you might be dealing with, with a number of sales report or other reportorial documents. For those in the field of education or in the liberal arts, then definitely you might be dealing with a number of research works, which will, of course, guarantee that you need to use your technical writing skills. Engineers, for example, may be asked to make several proposals, field reports, laboratory reports, system design, prototype designs, technical feature summaries, client reports, and other reportorial documents in the field. That is one example on how or on, on the number of documents that engineers may do in their field. Likewise, business-related professionals, for example, those who are accountants, marketing specialists, real estate agents, entrepreneurs, hotel or restaurant managers, hospitality and tourism specialists, will be asked to make a number of technical documents as well ranging from simple corporate reports to business proposals, performance evaluations, analysis papers, feasibility reports for those who are planning to establish 
a new business or for those who are trying to measure the marketability of a business being proposed, budget proposals, and a lot more. And then, there are also other documents that those in the field of liberal arts and education could make. Professionals who are in this field, example, psychologists, political scientists, teachers, and social workers, will be expected to produce a wide array of technical documents, such as policy papers for those in the field of political science, analysis papers as well, lesson logs for those in the field of education, case studies, summative reports, and other reportorial documents significant in the field. But most often than not, people who are engaged in liberal arts and education field will most likely make research works. And in research works, technical writing skills also play an important role. Health professionals such as nurses, medical technologists, pharmacists, and doctors are also highly expected to create accurate reports about and for the clients or the patients. Other technical documents include lab reports, summative reports, case reports, health policy proposals, and other program implementation status reports needed by a health facility or another health, of health professional. That is why in the field of health professionals, it is very important to always achieve accuracy with the technical documents they are writing. Imagine if these technical documents are inaccurate. And definitely, they are risking not only their job, but also the lives of their clients or the patients. So with that, I want you to fully realize that you should never underestimate the power of writing in the professional world. Because wherever you go, whatever job you will land on, there will always be a special place for technical documents. And technical documents, written forms of communication, really are very vital in the corporate, in the corporate world. Technical communication is oral and written communication for and about business and industry. So we have to remember that when we talk about technical communication, it does not deal only with um, written form of communication. Spoken form of communication, such as delivery of reports or um, presentation of a PowerPoint, may also be a form of technical communication. It focuses on products and services, how to manufacture, market, manage, deliver, and use them. But in this course, our focus really is on technical writing. So we are talking about a written form of technical communication. This time, I will be discussing to you the characteristics of effective technical communication. And during my discussion, I want you to internalize each one of these characteristics so that you would know what to always observe when writing technical documents. And definitely, your knowledge of these characteristics will help you create a quality output later on when you start writing technical documents, not only in this course, but also in your future profession. First characteristic, clarity. When we talk about clarity, it does not only mean clarity of the message we're trying to relay. I think making sure that there is proper sentence construction and there is paragraph coherence will actually help you achieve clarity with the message that you are trying to relay towards your reading audience. Clarity here means that you always have to make sure that you achieve sentence construction and paragraph coherence by all means. Take a look at this. First incorrect sentence is, the contract should be signed by Mr. Aguirre on the dotted line. Imagine Mr. Aguirre is on the dotted line. The proper way of saying it is, the contract should be signed on the dotted line by Mr. Aguirre. If you notice, there's a big difference between the two statements. Both of them are structurally or syntactically correct, meaning there is no grammatical mistake. But in terms of semantics or meaning, there's a big difference. The second one is the correct sentence because the signature should be done on the, on the dotted line by Mr. Aguirre. And it's not the other way around where Mr. Aguirre is on the dotted line. Okay? Another set of examples is this. As newcomers to our community, the merchants of ABC Company wish to make available to you a variety of complementary products and services. Here, the merchants are the newcomers. However, it should have been, as newcomers to our community, you are invited to make advantage of a variety of complementary products and services offered by the merchant of ABC Company. Here, you are the newcomers. See? One misplacement of a word will definitely create a difference in the meaning. So make sure that in terms of sentence construction, you know where to place the words properly 
so that the message or the correct message could also be relayed to your reading audience. The second thing that you always need to achieve when writing is paragraph coherence. That is for you to achieve clarity as well. Make sure that sentences are placed in logical order. That is why before we finally create our technical documents, we create a draft way in we can make sure that all our ideas have been presented logically. Second one, make sure that a following sentence relates to the previous sentence. You always need to find a connection between the preceding and the next sentences. Third one, to avoid redundancy, substitute pronouns and synonyms to refer to previously mentioned nouns and pronouns. Do not repetitively mention names within a paragraph. Instead, effectively use pronouns to substitute the antecedent or if not, use synonyms so that the same word would not be repeated all throughout the paragraph. Fourth one, you need to add um, transitional expressions. So these transitional expressions include therefore, of course, meanwhile, as a consequence, so that there could be a smooth flow from one idea to another, from one sentence to another. There are a lot of transitional devices that we can use in the English language. You just have to utilize each one of them in a paragraph so that you can actually create a smooth transition from one idea to another. That is how you truly achieve not only paragraph coherence, but also sentential connectedness. And lastly, signal a turning point with words such as but, however, or on the other hand, if you are introducing contrasting ideas in a sentence or in a paragraph. So that is how you achieve clarity. Make sure that your sentence construction is correct, grammatically and semantically speaking, and make sure also that there is paragraph coherence. Take this for example. As soon as we receive another shipment of Bunawan Crystal, your order will receive top priority. We are doing everything possible to restock our inventory. The 10-inch Agora vase is presently out of stock. We appreciate receiving your recent order for Bunawan Crystal. But take a look at a better version of the sentence. We appreciate your recent order for Bunawan Crystal. A 10-inch Agora vase you requested is presently out of stock. We appreciate receiving your recent order for Bunawan Crystal. Filling your order will be our top priority. If you notice, the better version of, this, of the paragraph will tell you that there is, logical, there is a, a logical order of ideas. Secondly, ideas have been presented in a coherent manner, meaning every sentence within that paragraph are interrelated. You could also sense the smooth flow from one idea to another. So that is how you achieve paragraph coherence. So the tip here is that before you finalize your paragraphs, make sure to double check the contents if everything has been placed logically, okay, or everything has been arranged systematically. The second characteristic that, characteristic that you always need to achieve is completeness. In any reportorial document or technical document that you will write, make sure that all facts or information are complete. For example, when you write a letter, Avoid using to whom it may concern or placing an underline there somewhere in the inside address. If you do not know to whom the letter should be addressed, you should diligently look for whom the person should be addressed. Another thing is that check for missing information because sometimes within the paragraph, you might have mistyped something or you might have overlooked important information that might have an effect in understanding in the understanding of the technical document as a whole. So completeness here refers to making sure that all pieces of information have been incorporated into your technical document. Third one is conciseness. Remember that in the corporate world, not all the time, I mean, managers or executives do not have the luxury of time to check everything in the technical document. So as much as possible, make sure that it is concise yet comprehensive. You can make your output comprehensive by making sure that you have just brief paragraphs so that the readers could easily scan through the contents. They do not have, or they will not be wasting time to read everything in your paragraph. Meaning go to the point, be direct, be straightforward as much as possible. Most especially if it has something to do with reportorial documents. Conciseness here would mean that you have to make sure that you could compress all your ideas in a brief paragraph or in, in sentences only so that you could easily relay the message towards the reader. Let's take this for example. Our marketing director thinks that perhaps next week 
or the following one, we will find ourselves in the appropriate position to announce to the industry and to the public our newly developed and inexpensive scanner, the all print reader. However, this paragraph could have been written in a brief way. And that is, our marketing director anticipates that within the next two weeks, we will be ready to announce our new inexpensive scanner, the all print reader. I want you to study how direct, how straightforward the better version is compared to the poor version. In this case, we could realize that it also plays an important role if you know how to make your paragraphs or your statements concise. That saves your reader some time in reading and in understanding the entirety of the paragraph itself. Another set, please raise the top of the table another three inches. Why state it in this way while well, you can state it by saying, please raise the tabletop another three inches. Instead of saying the top of the table, you can actually shorten it to one word only, and that is tabletop. Another thing, the two twins work in the same department. Twins already, the word twins already is composed of two people. So you can say the twins work in the same department. Conciseness here means getting rid of redundancy. Okay? You also get rid of double speak, double meaning and statements. So that is how you achieve conciseness in your paragraphs. Fourth one is consistency. Consistency here refers to the consistency of the mood or the tone and the consistency of the pronoun usage. For example, in a technical document, if you use second person, then all throughout you use second person. If you use first person, all throughout you use first person. If in the introductory part of a technical document, you use he, she, or it, then you have to use the same all throughout. That is how you achieve consistency. Also, consistency in terms of the mood or tone. If your tone is authoritative, then you have to be consistent with it all throughout. If your tone is polite, respectful, or courteous, then you have to be consistent with it as well all throughout. Consistency here will allow you to make sure that there is also a consistent way of understanding the message related to the reader. Secondly, consistency here will also help the reader to achieve that consistent emotion by the time that that reader reads the contents of your technical document. So that is how important consistency is in technical documents. Fifth one is concreteness. Concreteness here refers to you avoiding being vague in making your technical documents. Sometimes if you're the reader, you might have some difficulties understanding the contents basically because there are portions which are vague. Vagueness will not really contribute that much in understanding the contents of your technical document. So how do we achieve concreteness? Make sure that you use concrete words. Do not use the abstract ones. Make sure also that you specify, let's say, when you give examples, so that you could be easily understood by your reading audience. Take this for example. Two people conversing. I bought a dog yesterday. Oh yeah, what kind? St. Bernard. Full grown or puppy? Puppy, male or female? Male. What color? Brown and white. There has been a long conversation in this example. Well, in fact, it could have been summarized by saying that that person here has actually bought a brown and white male St. Bernard puppy yesterday. See, the vagueness here would actually lead to a conversation to much more time understanding or comprehending everything. Same goes when you write technical documents. The more concrete it becomes, the more it is, or the, the easier it becomes for the reader to understand the contents of your technical document. So when you write technical documents, always remember to be very concrete, exact, or specific with the things that you are mentioning there. And the sixth characteristic is courtesy. In any technical document, you always have to remember to be polite at all times. For example, when you write a resignation letter, even if it's a resignation letter and you have something against the company, still you need to write your resignation letter in a courteous manner. Courtesy here means that you have to use words or statements which will really signal that you are being polite to the person reading your technical document. This is specifically true for cover letters for proposals. When you propose something to your executives or your higher-ups, definitely you are trying to convince them to confirm or to approve your proposal. And if that is the case, you're requesting something. And if you request something from your higher-ups, it is very vital that you be very courteous so that there is a higher possibility that your 
proposal will be approved. Of course, not solely based on the courtesy or the how polite you are, but based on the contents. But it is more on the approach or the manner how you convince the person to believe in the proposal that you are, the proposal that you have submitted to that higher up or executive. So, students, I want you to always remember the characteristics of communication, technical writing. First one, there should be clarity. Make sure that everything is clear. Make sure that you achieve correct sentence construction and there is always paragraph coherence. Second one is completeness. Make sure that all facts information have been indicated in the technical document that you have written and also check for the accuracy of the figures that you have indicated there in your technical document. Third one is conciseness. Make it brief because your bosses or your higher ups do not have the luxury of time to read everything in your proposal. So make it short, make it brief yet comprehensive. Fourth one, make sure there is consistency. Be consistent with pronoun usage, the point of view, and as well as the mood or the tone. Fifth one, there should be concreteness. Make sure that you avoid vague words which may invite confusion or misunderstanding or misinterpretation on the side of your reading audience. And lastly, always be polite. Be courteous. Courtesy here means you have to wear the shoes of the reader. You have to make sure that once you're the reader, you are really able to understand the message of the technical document and you're also able to feel the emotions behind. Let's say if it's a letter or yeah, it's a letter or any form of correspondence. With that being said, I hope that you have fully understood all of the things that I have discussed in this video. And if you have questions, you are free to post your questions on the open forum section. Thank you very much for listening.